Okay. I've come here today from Dublin with a contingent of women on the train. We're all women engaged in the struggle for women's rights. We've been involved in that struggle for decades. We, we work as teachers, carers, look after our families, look after our elderly. So we need no lectures from those people over there about care and love. We give it every day of the week. Nor do we, nor do we appreciate their stereotyping of us with pink cups and roses. We get our hands dirty, we are prepared for a fight, and we look after people. So that's what we do in society. I've worked as a nurse and a teacher and spent my life as a young woman fighting for women's rights. The right to contraception, abortion, and workers' rights, and against imperialism. I'm a socialist, a socialist feminist. But all the organizations that I worked alongside before are now on the other side. They're for men's rights. They ignore the rights of women. So they have they've accepted that we our rights are subordinate to trans demands. We don't protest at their events, but today we need a police cordon for our safety. This is human rights and democracy in 21st century Ireland. This is human rights and democracy across the Western world where women's voices are silenced. So there's a myth out there that women's rights are an issue for the far right. But the far right have never supported women's rights. I'm a socialist, and if you're a socialist, you have a duty, as all us women here today have, to defend women's rights. It should go without saying that we condemn the far right. So the protesters who are maybe here today are behaving like the far right. They're silencing us. They are not giving us a voice. Shame on them. We women in the south of Ireland, we thought we put the past behind us. The censorship, the church control, the subjugation of women. But no, we haven't. We haven't moved on. We've learned that. We've gone backwards, not since the foundation of the Irish state 100 years ago has there been such a campaign against the women of this state, of the southern, of the 26 counties. We can't even say our own name. The Gender Recognition Act and Self-ID brought in the back door has been the vehicle under which our rights have been decimated, swept aside, stripped from us. So every, since the passing of the GRA, every political party, trade union, employers organization, big corporations, NGOs funded by the state from taxpayers' money, they're all on board to kick women down, to drown out our voices, to shout us down. So that's what the reality is. And those people over there, many of them I know probably because I was on the left, they are a disgrace to the idea of socialism and to their red flags. They drag it in the gutter. Never before in the history of the Irish state has there been such a coalition of support for a issue that affects less than 1% of the population. The struggle for contraception in which I was involved, the struggle for abortion in which I was involved, the struggle for gay rights which I supported, all of those struggles were uphill battles with minuscule support. But this top-down movement with support from corporations, billionaires, etc., it's a very strange movement, very strange movement. And now this political establishment supports this, uh, uh, this uh, agenda uh, of ideology, gender ideology. And we, we have to surrender our rights as a sex. Fear of backlash, of being cancelled, of losing jobs, of losing friends, has stopped brave women and indeed men from stepping forward and taking up the mantle of fighting for women's rights and fighting for children who are vulnerable to gender identity mutilation. For myself, 
I came to this, really I'm ashamed to say, just last year. I tweeted in response to an ICCL criticism of the debate on RTE, the discussion on RTE, about keeping the word woman in the maternity legislation. I was involved in a campaign, the National Maternity Hospital campaign, also known as the campaign against church ownership of women's health care. The moment that tweet went out, I was there was an emergency meeting or a meeting of the steering committee of the campaign in which I endured intimidation, threats, accusations that I was associating with the far right and it was the most harrowing experience of my entire life. I left that campaign the next day for my own mental well-being and obviously because I had wanted to have nothing to do with people like that. After a ge generation, after so many years fighting for women's rights and for decency, I didn't want to be associated with them. And shame on the Irish Civil Liberties Organisation, the Irish Council for Civil Liberties, for going along with that and silencing women and silencing me. So that's, the, and the politicians, I have to say one final word or a few words about the politicians. They, in 1916, um, at the anniversary of 1916, they were all celebrating equality. Equality for everyone, equality for the whole country. But now they have thrown those, those fine ideas, their flowery language, it's all got about equality. It's all in the gutter. They have thrown it in the gutter because they cannot say a woman is a woman, that a woman is an adult human female. As a former member of a teaching union, I know action can make a difference. And the most important thing is that we cannot rely on the unions because things are made behind closed doors with small numbers. So I think what we should be fighting for and demanding if we're in unions, particularly the teaching unions who are all on board with this ideology, is that we call for a debate and a ballot of the entire membership of the union. Because these things are pushed through by a clique, a clique. I know I was involved in unions. Sometimes we could never even get a quorum for a meeting. This is now reflecting the membership of the unions. They don't want this. Teachers don't want to be teaching children about something that is going to mutilate them. And they know that. They know that. But all it needs in a school is one activist and everybody is frightened to open their mouth because you're called a, a, a transphobe, a turf, well, a turf is actually a badge of honour now. Um, so parents have a big role to play. They have to be writing to the union head offices, emailing them, phoning them, inundating them with their concerns and also the board of management of schools. Because if we don't raise our voice, and I heard Kelly making this point, we need new heroes. We need, ev we need everyone who goes away from here today to get one people, one person on this issue to make sure that there's more people involved and that our numbers grow. We know this lunacy will be defeated, but sadly, without, not without terrible damage to young children. And even be, even if one young child is damaged by this sinister ideology, it's one too many. I'm now loaded up a turf, and I'm very happy to wear that badge. Initially, it just seemed a bit strange because I didn't consider myself as a, a, a radical feminist, but. We are fighting for women's rights, so it's a badge we wear with honour. So finally, coming from the south, we call on Lena Veladger, who agreed there was violent male sex abusers in Limbrick Women's Prison. Please remove these men immediately. Yeah. Parents and carers whose lives have been plunged, plunged into chaos through the indoctrination of their children in gender ideology theory. We stand with you. We are outraged at the Ladies Gaelic Football Association who accept males into the, onto the women's team. Please change this for the safety and respect of the players. We salute the Irish Rugby Football Union for their courage and decency. <laughs> 
making the decision to protect women's rugby and fairness in sport. Every person who came here today, despite the deep worry about their personal safety, and I have my daughters at home worried for my safety, there we are all heroes. So as I said before, we need more heroes. Please get your friends to join the fight. The, the tide is turning. Thanks for us.